Um, for those of you who are reading, hopefully when we've lit the Advent candles, you'll be able to see uh, your readings. If you don't, I have a torch, or you might want to bring your phone with you and put the light on. Um, other than that, I think everything should flow reasonably straightforwardly. Uh, we sing the carols standing, and we sit for the readings and the prayers and the talk. Or you can kneel for the prayers if you wish. Um, and it will, I think, I think I'll announce everything just to make sure it flows. And this year, uh, I am 99.9% .9 certain that we have the uh, uh, carols that we're expecting in the right order. <laughs> Unlike last year. <laughs> uh, so, first of all, uh, just a couple of notices. We're not going to have a, a communion service tomorrow morning uh, as we sometimes do have. Uh, so if you want a communion service on Christmas Day, uh, please do come to Airmin where there will be a service at 10 o'clock. And then on New Year's Eve, there will be a service here at 10 o'clock for all of the churches in what we call the benefits uh, from Airmin and Hook and here. We'll all be here at 10 o'clock on New Year's Eve. At the end of the service, because we have not having a communion after this service, we had it this morning, there will be mince pies and drinks, and you are welcome to stay, rather than us have to get you out in order to do another service. So you're very welcome to stay and hang around for a little while. It would be lovely to see you, and uh, do make sure that we don't have any mince pies or drinks left by the end of the evening. Uh, that would be fantastic. I think that's all the notices I need to... Uh, say. Um, so, do we have some people who want to help light the Advent candle? We need five volunteers. It's easiest if you just come up. I can't see in the dark. When we get to five, we'll kind of work from there. Oh, we've got, definitely got one at the front. Another one coming from... Yep, any more? You can start, oh, there's two more, we've got, I think we've got four, so one more from over there and then we're done. Brilliant. Okay, well, we've got five here, but you can share, maybe, you can do it together. Yeah. Right, okay, so who's going to go first? Do you want to go first as you're on this side? Um, you need to be able to probably come along here so you can reach and light um, the furthest purple one, if you can. Uh, if you like the back one, if you like the, the one at the, yeah, well, probably that one. Because then, if we like the ones at the back first, we don't burn ourselves on them when we get... What we do in, uh, in church is we don't get chocolates every day for Advent or anything else. Right, who's, do you want to come up next? How many have we got? One, two, three, four. Yeah. So if you can come up and help, see if we can get you. I might have to lift you up. Is that all right? Can you hold this? Can I lift you up? Let's lift you up. Right, can you like that one at the back? No, the pink, the purple one. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Right, next person. Brilliant. I think you can reach, can't you? If you like the white one. Then if the two of you can like the pink one together, you... No, you can wait just a minute. We'll get you to do the last one. You're going to do it together. Are you going to, are you, are you going to lift her up or shall I lift her up? Okay, can you, if you come here, are you, can you just hold that for a moment? Thank you. I'm going to just lift you up. And then your sister's going to come. Is it your sister or is it your cousin? Are you like that pink one? Lovely. Thank you very much. And then come and do the last one. Do you need lifting up or are you okay? Shall we lift you up? Just walk carefully forward. I'll lift you up. There we are. Okay, brilliant. You get to blow that out as well. Blow this one out. Do you want to blow it out? Brilliant, thank you very much. Right. Well, I think they did a fantastic job. It's quite difficult lighting candles uh, like that. So, are we going to just have a prayer? 
uh, at the lighting of the Advent candles. God of all our lives, you call each of us to play a part in your story and purposes for the world. May you ignite in us the courage and humility of Mary and Joseph, that we may shine your light into the lives of others and draw them to the Christmas story where hope is born and all are loved. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first carol is number four, Once in Royal Davis City. As I say, we stand to sing.
A reading from Isaiah. The King of Peace is coming. Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot. Yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. And the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in obeying the Lord. He will not judge by appearance, nor make a decision based on hearsay. He will give justice to the poor and make fair decisions for the exploited. The earth will shake at the force of his word and one breath from his mouth will destroy the wicked. He will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. In that day, the wolf and the lamb will live together. The leopard will lie down with the baby goat. The calf and the yearling will be safe with the lion and a little child will lead them all. The cow will graze near the bear. The cub and the calf will lie down together. The lion will eat hay like a cow. The baby will play safely near the hole of a cobra. Yes, a little child will put its hand in a nest of deadly snakes without harm. Nothing will hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain for as the waters fill the sea, so the earth will be filled with people who know the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Our second carol is number six. The first Noel again we stand to sing. <laughs>
Well, I was slightly wrong, wasn't I? Do, do be pleased to be seated. I can't see with the candles. <laughs> the angel visits Mary. The next lesson is from Luke 1, 26 to 38. In the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David and will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I'm a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. And this is the word of the Lord. Our next carol is number seven, Away in a Manger.
The birth of Jesus, Luke 2, verses 1 to 7. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was a governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. This is the word of the Lord. We stand to sing number 15, Silent Night, number 15. The response to God of every home is bring joy, warmth, hope, and peace. Let us pray. As we think of Mary, we pray for all mothers today. For those for whom motherhood has brought joy. For those who have struggled with the responsibility. For those whose children are ill for those who have been separated from those they gave birth to. And we pray too for those women who have no children. God of every home, bring joy, warmth, hope 
and peace. Remembering Joseph, we pray for all fathers, those struggling to provide for their children, those rejoicing as they watch their children grow up, for any that are separated from their children and any men who have no children. God of every home, bring joy, warmth, hope and peace. We pray for all those newly born as they develop and discover and learn and they grow into little people. We pray especially for any in danger of any sort. God of every home, bring joy, warmth, hope and peace. And we pray for our families. We pray for our homes that they may be filled with all that life can bring. God of every home, bring joy, warmth, hope, and peace. Through Jesus' love we pray, amen. This reading is the shepherds and angels from Luke 2. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognise him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. And this is the word of the Lord. We stand to sing number 10, our shepherds watch number 10.
Matthew 2, verses 1 to 12. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men came from eastern lands, arrived in Jerusalem, asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed on learning this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. So we called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, well, this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. He told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. When you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this, the wise men went on their way. The star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasure chests, giving him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. And this is the word of the Lord. It's down to St. Carol number 26. We three kings of Orient are number 26.
Jesus, you sit down. Let's just pray. Dear Lord, we ask that as we think about this story of your birth, so it may help us to live our lives well in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, I just need to go and put on a light in the uh, chancel so that we can uh, get on with the next stage. And I need uh, a couple, two or three volunteers, um, people who enjoy... Anybody enjoy camping? I just need a couple of volunteers. It's quite straightforward. Uh, this was a health and safety was the reason. I just need you to put up a tent. If somebody could put up a tent for me. Come on, there must be some of you who could put up a tent. I could have just left the lights off and you would have had to do it in the dark like you usually do. Yeah, good, we've got one there. I'm sure that you'll find a way of getting this up. And the trick is to get, if you get it up quickly, I have to preach for less time. Well, I could, I'm just persuade someone else to join you. Come on, you must be able to help him. Right, good. You'll be able to do that. So, if you, put, I suggest somewhere in this area, try not to poke uh, his mother with your, the, the, the poles. I don't know, somewhere there. Right, okay. So, um, the next question is, why on earth am I getting them to put up a tent? Well, how does the tent relate to the Christmas story? Anybody give me any reasons? Go on, just shout something out. There must be a reason that you can think of why a tent relates to the Christmas story. Shelter. Yeah, it's a bit like the, um, the shelter that Mary and Joseph ended up in. Um, was a temporary place to live. Where, what else is in the Christmas story that might involve tents? Just sing about. Yeah. Didn't they? Well, and they travelled, they were kind of Bedouin, so they probably travelled with tents in order to uh, uh, do their journey. And... Uh, what happens to Jesus after the um, wise men have been and Mary and Joseph? Does anyone know? We haven't listened to that bit of the story, but does anybody know what happens to the story then? They go on the run, don't they? They go to Egypt as refugees and they end up probably in tents as refugees, don't they? And so there's lots of reasons why tent, uh, putting up a tent you, you need to be quicker or I'll end up preaching for hours. <laughs> um, uh, there's lots of reasons why you might want a tent or why tents might be relevant. Because of that temporary shelter, that uh, reality that God comes to earth in a way that engages with us in the temporary passing bits of life and meets with us and uh, meets us and meets us in places where uh, we're not expecting and sometimes we're not wanting to be as Joseph and Mary. They didn't want to be in Bethlehem. They'd rather be back in Nazareth, wouldn't they? But they were forced to go to Bethlehem. And uh, sometimes uh, God is concerned about those who live in tents. And sometimes they've had a bit of a bad press recently. Some of them are really in desperate states. Some of them are uh, refugees they might be economic migrants who are just trying to make a better w world for their families. After all, I think that's what most e economic migrants are trying to do. So we need to make a better world, don't we? So that families everywhere can stay where they want and don't have to travel and end up in tents and end up in all sorts of risky situations. And uh, God comes to engage with us and to make our world a better place. And he engages with us to help us and to meet with us. And sometimes, uh, like the Bedouin, they're probably their tents were fantastic. Sometimes if you go into those or see pictures of those tents which uh, the really uh, rich travellers would live in, the insides are fantastic. They're wonderful spaces. And God can come and make our worlds a wonderful space. Hey, well done. Uh, well, no, I don't need to get into it at the moment. I mean, you, you could, 
You could put the roof on it and uh, the, the little bit and then it will stop the rain getting in, but hopefully the roof will live up to that. Um, and hopefully it's not going to blow away if we put it outside today. It would have done, wouldn't it? So we can remember uh, in that illustration. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah, that's all you had to do was, you know, be a, 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 give us a demonstration. That, thank you. But you've had your round of applause. You're not getting another one. <laughs> oh, you are. There you are. Put the door to the front. And then uh, no end of chaos will happen at the end of the service with children playing in it, won't they? Um, but also God involves in our play in all sorts of ways. And we remember that. We remember particularly any who are struggling, who are in need and are, for some reason, away from their homes this Christmas in a way they don't want to be, uh, just as Jesus was in the story and just as he wants to meet with us. Uh, one of the other things I did say in the other places was that uh, one of the good things about a tent is that you can come to anywhere and God can come to anybody's house and stay in the garden well, he can come inside, can't he, hopefully? And that's another picture that we can take away with us, that God is there for us, to be with us in our situation. We pray that God may indeed be with us and help us to go forward as his people. Amen. Right, I think um, the next thing that's going to happen is that we're going to Light the Chris Singles. Now, there's very important uh, things to tell you about with Chris Singles. You've probably got this down to T by now because you've done it for so many years. But anyhow, I will repeat the safety advice. Well, there's two bits of safety advice. One is don't like the hair of the person in front of you or their clothes. The second is when you light a Chris Singles, you tip the Chris Singles over to the side like that. And then you keep the one that's lit upright. Don't tip it over again, otherwise the wax will drop on something. So if you can keep the one that's lit upright, then you can light the next one from it by tipping it over to the side. Okay, so do we have some volunteers who are handing out the Chris Jingles? Hopefully we do, because I don't want to have to do it all myself. <laughs> ah, I think there might, is there somebody organized? Possibly. Um, what we need is some people to go down the middle and some people to go down the sides. And we'll just pass them along the rows and then we'll light them uh, once you've got them. Uh, what we could do with, we've got, could do with one more person to help pass the Chris Singles out because then we can go two rows down the middle. We probably need a biggish person because they're quite heavy. There we are, we've got a big person, thank you. There's one more tray. So... And then if I come and light the first one, or you're going to have one lit. Aha, look at that. And generally, we try and aim the Chris Singles to the children because we don't have Chris Singles for everybody. But as we're all children, you have to define who you think it should end up with. Thank you. Great. Mine has gone out. One of the symbols of uh, the Chris Dingle as we do it this way is that we pass the light of God between ourselves and we slowly light up the whole world and that's part of what we as Christian people try to do we try to pass light and hope and love between one another so that we might light up the whole world with all the good things that God brings into our lives and those of you who uh, have seen these before will know that the man who invented them invented the orange to look like the world the 
candle is to symbolize the light of Christ. The fruits ar around are the fruits of uh, the year, the seasons, the good things that we have in life and the good things we have in relationships. And uh, the uh, ribbon around the middle is the blood of Jesus who died for us that we might be free from our sin and our selfishness and be free from death and be able to live eternally. I think we've almost, we're getting there with the Christian because we've got a few more to get to the back. Hopefully everybody who wants one uh, will get one. If you wanted a Chris single and you haven't got one, there are one or two spares there, so raise your hand and we'll get them to you as we go forward. We're going to stay seated. I don't know why we chose this song to stay seated to, but there you are. Um, it's safer, I think, if we stay seated whilst we sing uh, Ding Dong Merrily on High. Oh, it's number... I should tell you what number it is. As I, it's number eighteen. If you're using the carol sheet, it's number eighteen. sing the uh, next carol we just have a prayer of blessing dear Lord we ask that we may have the humility of Mary and Joseph the joy of the shepherds the wisdom of the wise men and that you will bless our homes and families this Christmas and that we may bring light and hope and love to all those we know and all those we meet. In Jesus' name. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. 
Amen. Our final carol is number nine on Christmas night or Christian sing. I think again we'll stay seated. It's a very good German tradition to sing seated and stand for the, the prayers, but uh, we'll stay seated for number nine on Christmas night. <laughs> blow out your Christingles um, and you can take them home. Uh, you don't need to eat the sweets now and if you do please don't stick the, the points of the cocktail sticks into yourself in any way. Um, but you're very welcome to take them home and uh, use them again as a symbol of God's light. Uh, have a lovely Christmas and uh, we pray that you may have also a really lovely new year. I do stay and make sure you eat the mince pies and uh, so on at the end of the service. I've already had the blessing, so I don't think there's much more to say other than do come to the back and enjoy the refreshments. <laughs> I'm